Good morning and thank you for joining us for our program this morning. I hope that you're doing well and having a blessed Lord's Day. This morning we invite you to worship with us at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ at 10 o'clock. As well, we invite you to attend our gospel meeting which begins next Sunday with Brother John DeBerry from Memphis, Tennessee. Brother DeBerry is the longtime minister of the Coleman Avenue Church of Christ and also has served for around 25 years in the Tennessee State Legislature. Brother DeBerry is a powerful proclaimer of God's Word and will be presenting six lessons on the very timely subject, America, a return to righteousness. Service times for the Gospel meeting will be 9 o'clock for Sunday Bible class, 9.50 for Sunday morning worship, 6 o'clock for Sunday evening worship, and 7 p.m. for Monday through Wednesday night services. We extend a warm welcome to you and invite you to be our guest at any or all of these upcoming services. This week, our radio programs are going to focus on several well-known hymns and the messages which they contain. This morning, we're going to begin our study with one of the most loved hymns of all time, a hymn called, How Great Thou Art. The English translation of How Great Thou Art was written by Stuart K. Hine, and also he was the one that composed the music arrangement for it. The lyrics are based upon Psalm 145 and verse 3, which says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. But the original Swedish text was a poem that was written in 1886 by a Swedish preacher by the name of Carl Boberg. Boberg's inspiration for How Great Thou Art came from a visit to a country estate on the southeast coast of Sweden. He got caught up in a midday thunderstorm with just awe-inspiring moments all around him of flashing lightning, followed by a clear, brilliant sun. Well, soon thereafter, he began to hear the songs of the birds in the trees. And this experience prompted Boberg to sit down and, in his own words, pen this hymn. Whenever he realized what was going on around him upon that day, in his own words, he fell down on his knees in humble adoration of Almighty God. The English translator Stuart Hine, with his wife, was a missionary in Poland and also in Czechoslovakia. And the thought of writing the original English lyrics came while crossing into the Carpathian Mountains of Russia in the 1930s where the scenery was greatly influencing him. The scenery was so awe-inspiring that it influenced his translation of this poem. One day this couple was caught in a violent storm and the thoughts of the first three verses in English were conceived. The fourth verse was penned after World War II. Now this morning we're going to be looking at how each of these powerful verses touch our lives in different ways, how they portray the scriptures, and how this great song of praise truly does praise the name of our Lord. First, we consider his power and his might. In the words of this great song, we find statements such as, Awesome wonder, all the works thy hands have made, the stars, the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the world displayed. Have you ever wondered about some of the works that God's hand has made? Have you ever seen a picture, for example, of an animal known as a platypus? These are very strange creatures. They live on the coast of Australia. And the bizarre appearance of this animal baffled European scientists when they first came across it, with some who felt like this was nothing but some type of elaborate fraud. Well, first off, this animal is a mammal, but it lays eggs. That's not common. That's not something that typically takes place. It has a tail like that of a beaver, but it has a bill that looks like a duck. Its feet are like that of an otter webbed for swimming, but it is also venomous. 
It's one of only a few venomous mammals. The male platypus has a spur on his hind foot that delivers a venom capable of causing severe pain to human beings. Now we consider a creature like this, and we say that this is truly an amazing creation of God, and it must be part of the mighty works which God has made because man could never conceive of an animal like this. Now what about an anim another animal, an, an animal known as the cheetah? the smallest of all of what are known as the big cats. It has amazing speed and stealth capabilities while lacking the ability to climb. It's the fastest land animal able to reach speeds between 70 and 75 miles per hour. This cheetah also can accelerate from 0 to 68 miles per hour 3 seconds faster than most sports cars can. Only God could create an animal such as this. But then we think about the elephant. The largest elephant ever recorded was shot in the country of Angola in 1956 and this male elephant weighed 26,000 pounds and was 13.8 feet tall. And these massive beasts, they are not dumb animals. They have a brain that weighs 11 pounds and they display a wide variety of behaviors and actions including the ability to feel grief, to make music, make art, to play games, to use tools, to feel compassion and self-awareness. Folks, all of this is evidence of an intelligent designer. That's God. Only God could create these types of animals. When we consider these animals as well as the thousands of other species of animals that are part of this world, we could truly say that only God's hands could have made these things. This hymn also has us to look at the stars. Have you ever gone out at night on a very clear night and looked up into the heavens and tried to count the stars? It's impossible for us to do this. We look into the sky on a clear night and we see a few thousand individual stars just with the naked eye. But astronomers tell us that there are about 100,000 million stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone. Outside of that, there are millions upon millions of other galaxies as well. We read in Genesis 1 and verse 16, God made two great lights the greater light being the sun to rule the day, and the lesser light being the moon to rule the night, he made the stars also. You know, when we read this verse, it seems almost like an afterthought that he made the stars also. Almost like it's no big deal. But what an accomplishment it was to create the billions of stars that there are in the universe. You know, here lately we've experienced some pretty significant rainfall. We've seen some pretty severe storms over the last few months. You know, I enjoy listening to the sounds of a thunderstorm. To sit somewhere safe and be able to view the lightning and to listen to the thunder. But have you ever thought about how powerful lightning really is? The leader of a bolt of lightning can travel at speeds of 60,000 meters per second and can reach temperatures of 54,000 degrees. There are over 16 million lightning storms every year and this lightning heats the nearby air to about 18,000 degrees nearly instantly. And that's almost twice the temperature of the sun's surface. And we think about the sun's surface, this heating that creates a shock wave that's, that's heard then in the sound of thunder, a mighty rolling thunder that can register as much as 160 decibels, which is 10 times louder than that of a jackhammer. It's capable of producing temporary deafness and can even rupture the eardrums that can lead to hearing loss, can lead to, to, to damage to the ears and it can be heard up to 10 miles away. Folks, when we think about this, it leads us to say, God, how great thou art. But who is it that controls all of this? Well, it's Jesus. 
We notice in Matthew 8, verses 26 through 27, And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? You remember they're out on the Sea of Galilee, they're in a boat, there's a great storm all around. He said, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And then he arose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Notice that statement again. Even the winds and the waves, or the winds and the sea, obey him. Folks, God is in control. And in light of the power of God, we truly can say, How great thou art. But also in this hymn, we see God's gentle spirit. Any, when we experience peace and tranquility, for example, we walk through the woods and the forest glades, we hear the birds sing, we look down from lofty mountains grander, we hear the brook, we feel the gentle breeze. These things show us how truly great God is. God holds all this power and might in his hand, and yet he blesses us with these gentle and powerful experiences. God's almighty, powerful hands have carved out these peaceful settings. You think about the wonderful things that he has created. You think about the expansive Great Can uh, the Grand Canyon. You think of the thunderous Niagara Falls. We think of the sprawling oceans. We think of the majestic mountains. We think of all of these beautiful scenery uh, images that come to mind. And God took pleasure in creating those things for us, for you and I to be able to enjoy. We read in Genesis 2 verses 8 through 10, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became four heads. Have you ever climbed to the top of a mountain, or even today driven to the top of a mountain? You look out from these places, and you see such great beauty that is there. God created these beautiful things for you and I. And when we see these beautiful displays of nature, we cannot help but think of God's great creative power as we stand in awe of his creation. Yes, how great thou art. And then we see God's saving son. Of all of the things that God created, his most treasured possession is man. Not the universe, not the animals, not all of the other things that he has created, but man. And God proved his love to us by sending his son, not sparing. He sent him to die. And when we think of this type of love, as the song says, we scarce can take it in. Folks, I can't even imagine why he did this for me. We think about the things that man has done from the time of, of the sin of Cain, a murderer. We think of the rampant sexual immorality that was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. We think of the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. We think of the evil of today's society with abortion, with mass murder, with abuse, with all of these things going on. And yet God sent his son to gladly bear the sins of the world so that we could have the remission of our sins. But when we fall victim to the evils of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, 1 John 2 and verse 16, then we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 2 and verse 23. But Jesus bled and died to take away my sins. Have you ever had to punish your child or maybe were punished by having something taken away? Maybe you were grounded from television or nowadays grounded from the phone or even as you got a little older, grounded from going out with your friends, things of that nature. Are those things really taken away? Well, no, because we eventually get those things back. But our sin has been completely taken away by Jesus. 
They're not lurking in the shadows, waiting to come back on us at an unsuspecting time. The psalmist said, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgression from us. And because of this, we can truly sing, God, how great thou art. One of these days, Christ is going to come. He's going to come with a shout of acclamation, and he's going to receive those who have lived a faithful Christian life into the joy of the Lord. He's going to come with this shout of acclamation, and we will be with the Lord forever. Yes, our God is a great God. He is an awesome God. He inspires awe in us each and every day. Everywhere we look, we see his mighty works. And so we are able to faithfully proclaim how great thou art. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. And have a blessed day.